Coming up on Techzilla, the return of the $500 PC, our parts picks, the perfect set-top box for HD Netflix, why we don't do Ergo, the perfect headphones for college, and quite a bit more. So fire up the grill and sear that steak, because Techzilla starts now. This episode of Techzilla is made possible by GoDaddy.com. Gamefly. Go to Gamefly.com slash Techzilla for your free trial membership. Dine Inc. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Welcome to Techzilla. Hands-on reviews the latest tech and how to make the most of the gear you've already got. Whether you're a beginner or tech support for your friends and family, if you've got a question about tech or the best way to store and serve honey, delicious natural honey, mm. we've got an answer for you. And if we don't, we'll track down someone who does. So, how'd the move go this weekend? Did you drop any HDTVs? Shockingly, no. No, because I figured it was like iPhone, <laughs> then maybe notebook, and then you move on to HDTV after that point. Happily, the iPhone 4 Look screen remains intact, although Roger knocked it out of my hands, intentionally. I, I have a little confession to make. Oh no. I have already dropped my iPhone twice. Did I talk about this on the show already? We talked I about remember. dropping, we had both dropped it the first time. Yes, it happened week. twice and I finally got one of these stupid bumpers. I freaking hate this stupid bumper. But it protects it, so $30 for a bumper from Apple that is ugly yeah. and I hate and doesn't even really fit the phone well. We're waiting for the uh, OtterBox cases to come out. Spec has an awesome, the candy shell cases are out at the iPhone stores, or excuse me, the AT&T stores only. So I'm waiting for Spec to start selling I want the Incipio else. Feather. That's the one I want. I want it in hot purple. Hot purple. Which they're not shipping yet. So get on that, Incipio. Hot Please. purple, ship it. I want it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I nearly jumped back from cable to DSL. Really? For my internet service. Why is that? Now, I wasn't just feeling 2002, because um, like you look at like AT&T DSL operating, it's like, oh, six megabit per second, mm -hmm. which sucks. Um, I found a regional uh, DSL provider, Sonic.net, here in the Bay Area. They offer ADSL Plus, which is asymmetric digital subscriber line. It's the like new version of DSL. Tops out at 18 or 30 megabits per second. Not bad. And is very price competitive with uh, cable modem. The real attraction for me though, no voice or telephone service is required. Mm -hmm. By the way, Comcast, I want to thank you for offering me several times during our conversation today uh, the opportunity to subscribe for your awesome voice services. <laughs> I, I hope you had lots of people sign up for that, but after the second time, uh, I, I said, please so. stop trying to sell me a service I won't use. They stopped. Um, yeah, the only downside of the ADSL is it's like one or two megabits per second up, so it's not mm -hmm. great for huge uploads. Um, That's not very good at all. Well, given that my, my current cable modem only does three megabits per second max, you know. That's also not very good. Yeah, well, I'm also going through that. There's a huge, it, it, I found a crazy document on the Comcast website that basically lists all of the current and end of life cable modems. Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking about wondering why maybe your speed isn't there, it could be an end of life to no longer support it for the cool guy speeds cable modem. We just got a brand new cable modem yesterday because mm. we were actually getting zero upload. <laughs> That's bad. Which is really not good. Yeah, so we got it fixed, and hopefully we won't have any more issues. I was get well, usually we get about thirty up. Web browsing I mean, sorry, thirty work down, well and then like can't around, upload. you know, fifteen up. And uh, this weekend, everything just went to crap, like in a hand <laughs> basket. It was terrible, and so we're like, this is not good. So we called right. them. They came over right away and, and took care of it. So hopefully, I won't have any more Borderlands sessions with Robert Heron interrupted. <laughs> He is good at video games, man. I had no idea. Anyway, having trouble finding one of Sprint's Evo 4G? Well, the Wall Street Journal is reporting that shortages of the super phone are fairly common. In fact, the Droid Incredible is also in short supply. Both are made by HTC, and according to HTC, the shortages stem from not having enough parts made by other suppliers, especially touchscreens. Apparently, Samsung's got the mad rush on touchscreens. Yeah, got to get those touchscreens in. Mm. In other Android news, the latest Android super phone, Verizon's Motorola Droid X, goes on sale this week and gets an editor's choice from PC Mag Sasha Segan. I can't believe it has three mics built in. It's got one for just regular talking and two for noise cancellation. So it, it must so have rad. amazing. Like I want to like download. Like, it, I want to. I, I have the ultimate noise canceling test. Mm -hmm. My truck with the diesel with the window open. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's a big one. Consumer Reports isn't exactly calling Apple a bunch of liars, but the magazine's sophisticated testing 
quote, calls into question the recent claim by Apple that the iPhone 4's signal strength issues were largely an optical illusion caused by faulty software that, quote, mistakenly displays two more bars than it should for a given signal strength. <laughs> the uh, Super Reports, if you don't know, they have one of the most sophisticated testing facilities for cell phones on the planet, and they've essentially confirmed with the full-on microcell in the giant Faraday cage, I am an engineer testing environment, that basically says, yeah, you touch the phone in the right spot and everything goes kerfuffle. Well, I mean, we've seen video proof of this time and time again. You've seen video proof that the bars drop, and according to Apple, you're not having a dropped call. Your bars are dropping because we programmed them wrong. I also saw video <laughs> proof that websites stop loading when you do that, too. That's an optical illusion because we programmed the bars wrong. F you and your optical illusions, Apple. Yeah. Seriously, come on. The bumper helps. The bumper does help. That's I, the one thing that really, other than the dropping, the bars situation has gotten a lot better. I never really had dropped calls, but you know what I realized, though, part of it was is, is I moved into the new place and mm -hmm. I had five bars of connectivity versus my old house. I realized all the problems with my phone in the old house, like, I never had dropped calls in my old house because it didn't make a difference because I had no reception anyway. <laughs> ah. Well, you know, I have to look into this, but I've, I've read on Engadget and a few other sites, and other readers have also written in saying that AT&T is giving away free microcells to some users. Hmm. And I haven't verified this yet, so I need to look into it a little bit more and see what people are actually getting and, and why and how. But that would be kind of cool if people could get some free microcells. TZ crew member Mark from Madison Heights, Michigan, adds a little Monty Python to the iPhone crankiness. He says, it's not a question of where he grips it, it's a simple question of weight ratios. A five ounce bird could not carry a one pound coconut. If you're staring at the screen right now going WTF question mark, go rent Monty Python's Holy Grail now on Netflix. And while you're there, use netflix.com slash techzilla when you sign up, please. By the way, maybe it's my bumper, I gotta say, but uh, the iPhone 4 really does work a lot better than the 3G. It does. Even in my old crappy reception. And like I said, I actually have reception in my new apartment without the microcell. Would you like to use the microcell I have? Oh, I can try your microcell? That's <laughs> yes. what you were saying? Hell yeah. Well, it's AT&T's microcell. Yes. I'll bring it by. I was just talking about this with Ryan the other day. He was saying that we get pretty good reception in the house, but I never get reception in the house, and calls drop constantly. Mm -hmm. So yes, I would love to try your microcell. We'll pass the microcell along for the Veronica Belmont extended test. All right, well, back to the questions. I think this is our first back to school question of 2010. Zach writes in, hey, Texilla crew, I'm heading off to college in a month and I won't be taking my computer speaker system along. Aww. Why not? There's gotta be room for it. He says, I'm an avid music listener and the speakers on my laptop won't keep me or my roommate happy for very long. My budget is between $100 to $150 and I'd prefer over the ear headphones, even if they do look ridiculous at times. What? No one cares about that. No one cares. It's all about the audio. But yeah. Sound can would be nice but is definitely not a key selling point as long as they're comfortable to wear for extended periods and have good coverage of the lows and highs I'll be happy thanks and keep up the awesome work Zach from Nashville in Illinois I love over the ear headphones it just gives you like that roominess like you can yeah. really hear like so much more space in the music yeah. and in the sound don't I mean don't get me wrong like somebody wants to spiff me a set of Jerry Harvey 13s save me eleven $1 hundred dollars I'll take those for in the ear but you know, noise canceling headphones, they make me feel like my head is about to collapse. They just don't sound right, especially in silence, like silent spaces in the music. So I'm glad you're open to regular, normal, high quality sound, amazing, don't cost an arm and a leg traditional cans. Though I do know frequent flyers that would weep if you took their Bose noise canceling headphones oh, away yeah. from them. Weep. Big time. Not softly, loudly. Big time. Like my little tiny boy. My standby, Grado 60s, top of the list for me. They aren't sealed, meaning they have an open back, which lets noise out and in, which can be a problem in the dorm room, but they're the best bang for the buck out there. Give them like just a week of listening to break in, you will be amazed. It's a great deal for the headset, for yeah. the headphones, I should say, not headset. Personally, I've said this a million times, I'm a big fan of Shure's, and you can get their newish SRH 840s on Amazon right now for about $155. It's a deal. Yeah, it's a really good deal. I'm not sure why the prices drop so much. Maybe they're not selling so hot. Who knows? Just as long as they're Sales. still out there cheap. Sales yeah. are good. <laughs> uh, these are definitely classics at this point, but the Sony MDR V700s were my favorite monitoring headphones back in college. Mm -hmm. And they were like 250 bucks at the time, which was a really big deal for me because right. I was broke 
that was too... I was so broke. And I was like, I need a good pair of monitoring headphones for class and for my audio recording sessions. And so I splurged and, and bought the 250 and they last headphones. Forever. They last until someone stole them from the CNET offices. Aww. But to any extent, you can now find them on Amazon for about 80 to 90 dollars, which is pretty good. Yeah, I mean, once you get up to 100, 200 bucks, you really have a ton of options. Sennheiser makes some of the best headphones in the world. The HD 448 is a classic, sells for a smidge under 100 bucks. For a smidge under $200, a little bit out of your price range, check out Sennheiser's PXC 350s. AKG, another high end headphone manufacturer, the K240 Mark IIs sell for 160 bucks. And basically, they, they are are easy enough to power, the resistance is low enough, uh, they can be powered by your iPod or Zune or anything like that. Mm -hmm. The low end to your professional Sony headphones, the MDR V6, cost a bit under 100 bucks, solid performance, great mm -hmm. all around sound. I, I still like Sony's headphones, they're like the classic, yeah. like you walk into a studio and somebody either has $9,000 headphones or there's a freaking $100 pair of Sony's in you there. You know, the one downside <laughs> about those headphones, um, they are cool because they're DJ headphones, right. so you can swivel the earpiece, at least the V700s, where I don't think the V6 are. Well, they do the thing where they swivel and they fold up into themselves. Exactly, which is very cool. But after a while, they really compress your ears down. <laughs> They're not exactly the roomiest in terms of, like, if you've got, I don't really have big ears, right. but they would smush them down and get them hot pretty quickly. Hot ears. Hot ears not are hot not fun nose. for a long-term kind of listening situation. Mm -hmm. Sure and Denon are relative newcomers to headphones, but they offer some great listening. Uh, Denon's $149 AHD 101K is getting rave reviews, and the lower version of the um, Shures that I spoke about earlier are $99. Those are the SRH 440s, and those are still good. Yeah. I mean, they, they're still going to give you really quality listening and for under 100 bucks. And if you're looking for something under 20 or 30 bucks, look for anything costs yeah. and uh, Sennheiser's HD 201 or 202s. Yeah, 20, 20 bucks for a set of, of, of two. There's like two or three different models that cost mm -hmm. offers that they offer phenomenal bang for the buck. And HD 201s and 202s of Sennheiser are nice. They're a little light, they're a little chintzy. If you sit on them, they, they may disintegrate. Yeah, don't do that. Don't, yeah, don't sit, don't on, your sit on your headphones. They don't like that. One nice thing to do is if you get a decent. Um, set of headphones and you can save up your money, get an external amp or save up like 20 bucks and buy the parts and build yourself a uh, headphone a amp. We talked deck, about that yeah. on, on, uh, on an episode of System. We actually built headphone amps that you the I remember that. amplifier, which is yeah, cool. amazing how your headphones can really open up the sound stage and imaging, which is. <laughs> and uh, getting a decent source. Like, if you're using your notebook output, some notebooks have decent audio, some notebooks have horrible audio. Uh, finding a decent outboard audio uh, digital to analog converter can be really sweet. Well, still to come, we've got heat guns. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> but while we've got your attention, what effect one of our sponsors, GoDaddy.com. Do yourself a favor, keep your personal information away from spammers, hackers, and that crazy guy you lived with in school. We're talking about private domain registration. GoDaddy.com has it and it protects you and your privacy by keeping your address, your phone number, and more out of public databases. And remember, if you haven't seen it yet, GoDaddy's got a free iPhone, Android, and Blackberry app. You can order right from your phone, manage your current domains, and quite a bit more. You want a discount? Of course you do. Use the code TEK11 when you check out. You'll score 15% off any order of $75 or more. And hey, before you do that, check out revision3.com slash GoDaddy. We've got a list of all of the amazing GoDaddy deals from Revision 3. Probably going to save you money no matter which one you use. Check it out, people. Welcome to this week's freebie download pick. A free program that we find useful, fun, or incredibly interesting. This week, Spyware Terminator. Spyware Terminator is a pretty full-featured application for Windows that searches and removes spyware from your computer. It works like other popular spyware scanners with the added benefit of having free automatic updates to its spyware directory. Other free apps often ask you to upgrade to a paid version before you can get those auto-updates. In addition to the spyware scan, you can set up scheduled scans, remove cookies from your machine, view reports from previous scans, and even take advantage of the built-in open source CLAM AV virus scanner, as well as HIPS protection. You can run a full scan, a fast scan, to get a quick look at your system's health, or a custom scan. You also have the ability to whitelist and blacklist items on the real-time scans. Overall, for a free application, this is quite solid. They also have free support, and 64-bit Windows 7 is now also supported. Check out spywareterminator.com for more info and to download. Do it now. Steve writes in, I need to get a streaming box for my mom that has 802.11G, can play Netflix and Techzilla podcasts, pull MP4 shows from a Windows XP box, and other free stuff off the internet. Can you give me your best HD and non-HD recommendations for this, like the Roku or the Popcorn Hour? The HD version needs to stream Netflix in HD, and I do not want a gaming console. Thanks, Steve in Middleville, Michigan. 
One box to rule them all. And then the darkness guide them. And then the darkness guide them. Mind them. One box rule to rule them. them all. One box to find them. One box to play something, Netflix. Something, and Look, in the darkness guide them. I'm, I'm going to take the heat on this one. We're just going to skip non HD recommendations. I'm sorry. If you're curious about standard definition boxes, take a look at our recommended boxes and see if they have SD ports. I apologize, but I've, I've turned my back on standard def. <laughs> You've turned away. I've turned away. No, <laughs> no longer. Um, it's actually really easy to find boxes that like stream video from your home server. It's easy to find boxes that stream Netflix. But finding one box that does both that isn't a PS3 or an Xbox 360 is a bit harder. Yes, the ever so charming yeah. Roku HD box. And uh, don't do streaming of content from your personal video server, unfortunately. Nope. The boxy box won't be out until November, also unfortunately. Apple TV doesn't do Netflix unless you hack it with boxy. And I'd hold off on buying an Apple TV until we see if Engadget's $99 Apple TV update rumors are true. Because that would be an awesome deal for the that money. That would be cool. That would be very cool. Yes, I yeah. never use my stupid Apple TV. I still use my Apple TV all the time. Do you? My son uses it a lot. Ah. Talk about that later. It's all about the curious George. Sayabas has stated that the Pop Box, their stylish replacement for the Popcorn Hour, uh, also won't do Netflix. After all. Yeah, that was like the initial announcement at CES was Netflix, and the latest rumors are no Netflix. What the what? Yeah. No, look, assuming you're not ready to spring for an ACTV or a Blu-ray player that streams movies and Netflix, which there are a lot of options out there, that leaves us thinking about the WDTV Live Plus. It's Western Digital's latest top-of-the-line set-top box. We haven't seen the 120 box yet, but Western Digital added Netflix features to it back in June. It's 120 bucks, not a bad deal. I've seen a lot of HD video stream through the WDTVs, and it looks fantastic. Now, I just need to make sure our new 720p HD stream is working properly on it because there were some issues playing back yes. our 720p stream on the Western Digital Live. Which that was is, actually a question from way back when. Yes. Like, why doesn't Texilla work on this box? I think we have it fixed. I need to verify that, though. Um, but yeah, actually, there, there are a number of, of Blu-ray players. If you want to spring for a Blu-ray player for mom, you know, your, your options open up a little bit. But it's amazing, like, there are boxes that stream sort of closed content feeds, and there are boxes that stream everything that doesn't have DRM. But one that does both is a little harder. But I just don't understand what the deal with the consoles is, because, I mean, between the new Xbox and the PS3 Slim, I mean, they're not that expensive compared to these other boxes. And they do all the streaming he needs in HD. Maybe. Got the Netflix. <laughs> Some people are just anti-gaming console. All right. I'm just saying. I don't understand you. It, it is but I a valid you. entertainment okay. solution. I hate saying it. I'm not allowed to say solution. A valid entertainment solution. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Plus the Netflix and the PS3 thing is kind of a pain. Like you have to put the Netflix. You have to put the disc, disc in, in but you have to do that with the Wii too. It's still equally it's SD. annoying. I understand. SD. I understand. <laughs> Anyway, Andrew writes in, love the show. A while ago, Patrick mentioned the Tektron portable heat gun available at Fry's. Can we have a review now that you've had it for a while? If all I need to do is heat shrink tubing, is this the best option? Are the larger and more expensive heat guns worth it, or are they overkill? Thanks, Andrew. Well, oh boy, heat guns. Where do you start? Where do I start? <laughs> I mean, I have used propane torches for heat shrink tubing. This is overkill, but, you know, I've used for heat shrink tubing, right? It's really simple. Yeah. You apply heat, it shrinks, it seals your connection, water stays out. It's one of my favorite happy. things because it reminds me of, like, all those stu all that stuff you used to play with as, as a kid. Like, you take the Shrinky pills dinks. and you drop them in water right. and they expand, or you put the things and you draw on the things and you stick them in the oven, they shrink down, they look really cool. It reminds me of that. It's like the adult version of that. I absolutely 100% agree. That I can think the total adult version would be shrink wrapping your car with those anyhow. The first time he ever showed me the shrink wrap tubing, the shrink wrap tubing, I was like, that is so rad. <laughs> we need more. Yeah. The uh, here's the thing, right? The, the reason I like the Tektron is it's basically this thin little tube. It's a little bigger than a soldering iron, and it's small, so it fits in my little tiny bag with all the rest of my electronics gear. The big programmable digital heat gun that I have will do everything from like removing paint from hundred-year-old window sills to removing vinyl flooring to, by the way, burning heat shrink tubing because it's hot enough to actually you know turn the edges brown and crispy. Badass. Yes. Uh, it's it's overkill. If all you're doing is like, I, 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 am, I am shrinking tubing, you don't need a lot of heat to do that. That's one of the reasons I like the Tektron. Small, compact, portable, easy to carry. The oversized heat guns, they basically allow you to do everything from strip paint off your car to light small fires if you're not really careful. So um, you can also use a lighter. You can use a, if you're really patient, you can sit there with your soldering iron set on the maximum speed. What about a blow dryer? Not hot enough. Not hot enough. Okay. Generally speaking, you have to. I thought it was to... worth, a, worth a shot. <laughs> 
talk to about dry, ask, frizzy ends. Yeah. <laughs> what was that terrible foomp? <laughs> Veronica tried to use the heat gun as an emergency hair dryer. <laughs> <gasps> no! Um, yeah, Veronica comes in with a hat next week and wears it for the next eight episodes. Yeah, no, it's great actually. It hasn't. It, you know what I mean? It's 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 Stone Age technology. There's there's a little tiny fan. There's a little tiny heat element. It plugs into a wall and it hasn't disintegrated yet. So I give it the thumbs up. <laughs> All right. Well, coming up next, what kind of PC can you buy for under $500? But first... Let's thank one of our sponsors, Gamefly. Gamefly is the largest online video game rental service, people. They got over 7,000 new and classic titles, consoles, handhelds. They got it all. Plans start at just $15.95 a month. You can rent one to four games at a time. Keep them until you're done. No late fees, no due dates, and the shipping is always free. When you're done playing a game, send it back. Gamefly is going to fire out the next available game on your list right to your mailbox. If you really like the game, you want to keep it forever, click Keep It on the Gamefly website, and the game is yours at a discounted price. Gamefly will even mail you the case and manuals free of charge. Techzilla fans, well, they can get a two-week free trial, but only if they sign up at www.gamefly.com slash techzilla. Please support our sponsors. Looks like it's time for another website we just can't get enough of. A website that we just can't stay away from because it's too useful, too funny, or just too darn irresistible. This week's pick, Rhyme Zone. Are you a budding poet, a rapper who needs a little help with your lyrics? In the mood to write some limericks? Then visit Rhyme Zone, your one-stop shop for finding rhymes. It's easy enough to use. Simply type in the word you need a rhyme for, and the magic rhyming generator pulls up the words that work best. You can include phrases and even find synonyms, antonyms, definitions, similar sounding words, and more. Clicking on the word will bring up its definition, so you don't have to worry about adding in some meaning to your poem that you may not have intended. Need a little inspiration? You can pull up famous quotes from Shakespeare, old mother goose rhymes, and famous quotations. If the words you seek are yet unknown, find the terms you need within Rhyme Zone. Hey, I said I would find rhyming words. I didn't say it would give you talent. I apologize in advance for mispronouncing your name, but we went to pronouncenames.com and it wasn't listed, so you might want to take care of that. Divot sent this email to us asking, I'm planning on building a cheap, around $500 desktop in the near future. It's not going to be doing much except web browsing and development on a Linux partition and maybe play a few old games. I was looking through Newegg and Buy.com's list of motherboards and I was completely overwhelmed. What would be a good bundle of a motherboard, processor, probably dual or quad core, and a cooling fan? Divot. <laughs> Divot. 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 Hey, we asked our friend I'm Lloyd sorry. Case. <laughs> so sorry. It's okay. Okay. Go ahead and continue. No, no, I'm just I'm waiting for you to recover. You I feel perplexed. I feel bad. I hate mispronouncing people's names. I agree. It's they, terrible. They write sensation. in, they expect their thing to be read on the air. We give them an answer, but we can't even say their name right. I'm sorry. Read the answer. We asked your friend Lloyd Case about low-cost computer parts, because you're right, it is over. You go to Newegg, there's like 32,000 motherboards, and they pretty much all have the same specs, and it's really frustrating. He recommended, for your price range, a low-end Core 2 Duo or a dual-core Celeron and a micro ATX form motherboard with a G33 chipset. He prefers these days either Gigabyte or Asus. Those are the best bargain brands. If you want slightly better graphics that are still integrated, an AMD and Athlon X2, again in micro ATX format, would be an excellent pick. You'll be spending well under 200 bucks for the Intel combo and even less for the AMD motherboard CPU picks. You'll of course stick with the stock cooler since they'll come included with processors that'll save you like 50 bucks right there. Now if you want a cheap quad computing, check out AMD's Athlon 2X4635. We're talking about a quad core processor for a mere 100 bucks. Unfortunately, the cheapest quad-core Intel comes in at around 150 bucks for a Core 2 Quad Q8300. Now, he never mentioned if the $500 is for everything on the machine, including the case, the power supply, and graphics card, but that should get you under the $500 mark. Pretty much any of these combinations. Yeah. Uh, now, if you want, you can go with the parts we use in the under $600 gaming PC that uh, we all built for me back in episode 124. With the drop-in prices, you should be able to get a similar spec machine for around $500, if not under. The nice thing is because you're not building a gaming PC, Divot, is you don't have to spend a lot of money on graphics, which means you can save yourself a couple hundred bucks right there, which is sweet, and put it into a bigger hard drive or more memory or a copy of Windows 7 or a nice LCD flat panel. Yeah, totally doable. Yeah. Oh, I hope it wasn't $500 including a monitor. Yeah, I don't think so. That gets really hard. He's probably got a monitor already. Coming up next, we're going to fire out some more of your viewer questions. Right now, though, let's thank one of our sponsors. 
We wanted to take some time to thank Dine Inc. for helping make this episode of Techzilla possible. Dine Inc. operates two extremely reliable, rock solid global DNS platforms DineDNS.com for home SMB users and the Dynec platform for enterprise and fast growth organizations. Dine is making DNX sexy by powering the best brands on the web, including Revision 3. Looking to start your small business? DineDNS.com has the tools you need. Need more powerful DNS solution for your enterprise or fast growth company? The Dynec platform offers advanced load balancing and traffic management solutions on a powerful global network that will optimize the performance of your web systems. So visit www.dyne.com slash revision3 and click on DyneDNS.com to build a customized suite of DNS, email, and security services for your small business. Or click on Dynec to learn more about enterprise-level services. Eugene sent us this email from Down Under asking, I recently watched episode 141 where you discussed your preferred mouse and keyboard combinations. Being a tech savvy individual such as yourselves, I spend as much as four to six hours at my computer every day. Therefore, call us when you get to 12. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean Let to interrupt. Finish. Therefore, healthy ergonomic practices and tools are critically important to my body's well being. I was surprised that you didn't make any mention of this considering that both of you work in the industry. Not really a question, just food for thought, I suppose. Here's my setup if you're interested. For keyboard, Microsoft Natural Ergonomic Keyboard 4000. For mouse, the Microsoft Natural Laser Mouse 6000. For chair, the Steel Case Leap Chair. And the monitor is appropriately raised to ensure the neck is not strained. Again, love your show. Keep up the good work. Eugene C. in Australia. Something I learned back in my magazine days, if we give out ergonometric advice and you take it, you screw up your wrist, your back, your neck, your eyes, whatever, we might end up getting sued, even if it's something that you'd been doing wrong for 20 years. I, I can't even begin to explain to it. Look, frankly, despite my best efforts to use proper keyboard rest seating, raised feet on a footrest ergonometrics with a monitor at the perfect eye level, I keep ending up screwed into a little non-ergonometric ball with a notebook in my lap and my feet up on my desk. Kids, don't be like me. Learn the proper way to use a computer before you tear up your wrists, your back, and your neck. Now, we can put on an ergonometrics expert if I can find one that'll be on camera. Sometimes folks that charge big hourly fees to big companies are a little shy at giving away advice they normally get paid for. I'll see what I can do. I have to say this is super, super important because I'm actually in physical therapy right now because of strain on my shoulder and mm -hmm. neck and back be, because I slouch when I sit and because my chair was too low and so I was raising my arm to use my mouse. You're like chair totally was too low up. and your monitor was too high. And my monitor's actually you, too low so I'm looking down. down and sitting like this and so they came in and did a whole ergonomic thing at my other job for me and they're, they're trying to fix it but I have like, like six year long term damage in my back and neck because I did it wrong for so, so long. Yeah. So don't do it. And, and one thing that I definitely recommend, though, is using a free RSI program. That's Repetitive Stress Injury Program. Uh, you can get them for free on Mac or PC. Um, for Windows, WorkRave works really good. I think it also gives you stretching suggestions. What is an RSI program? An RSI program is a program that tells you to stop working at regularly scheduled intervals. Mm -hmm. So you don't, like, straight sit there for, like, 12 hours. Right. There's longer periods of stretching where you get up for, like, five minutes and actually move around a little bit and, and make sure that your back is straight and that your muscles aren't all cramped and then there's also smaller intervals where you just kind of stop and, and do some exercises and kind of release the tension in your muscles and there's one for Mac that I use called anti-RSI that we'll have the link to in the show notes as well that it's it's a little too frequent for the micro pauses <laughs> like I mean it gives you like every I think it tells how long you've been typing and so mm -hmm. it just stops you based on the amount of typing you've been doing so if you're if you're really powering through it's it's gonna get you but it's totally worth it it's not the kind of thing you want to not pay attention to. Yeah, because it is cumulative and what doesn't hurt you at 22 can tear you into small pieces by the time you're 40. Please. I just did like six double negatives. It is the kind of thing that you want to pay attention to. <laughs> pay very close attention to it. Please. All right, well, we've got another suggestion from Robert H. Well, not that Robert H. <laughs> for a totally badass home theater PC case. He sent us this link, you can see it here in the show, and it's like this old timey home theater PC case it with like all a big the right old 30s ins and outs. Era radio case. It does, it looks like an old timey radio. I think it's more like 80s style, maybe. Like No, no it's earlier than that. Much earlier. Way earlier than, earlier than, that. than that. Way earlier. I gotta say, the home theater PC eight thousand, it's a fun design. It's good that it handles a full ATX motherboard, it handles full size video cards, it offers front to rear airflow, which will keep everything cool. And at ninety bucks online, it's pretty reasonably priced for a home theater PC. PC case, because as soon as you put HTPC on a case, suddenly it's like 50 or 70 percent more. It's not really my cup of tea. No, you don't love it? It's, it's, I would rather actually either find a dead, like, 
old AM radio and mm -hmm. put the case in that. But the truth is, is it takes up too much space to fit under my HDTV. Oh, I didn't look to see what the Because I'd have this, I'd have this like, big, shiny, black, like, you know, television still But if you like, collect, like, old, cool, vintage stuff, it might fit in really well. I think so. No, yeah. I just, it's just, it's not my thing. I, it's, it's lovely. And actually, it's well engineered, which is really yeah. unusual for novelty cases. Well, as Patrick said, you can get it on <laughs> Newegg right now for about $89.99. And I think it would be a cool addition to anyone who collects old gear or just wants something that's a little bit quirky and different. You should build one for your new place if you get it. Yeah, that would be cool. Shiny. <laughs> and finally, Hunter writes in with an alternative to Lightroom. Okay, so you guys mentioned Lightroom 3, but you didn't mention a very reasonably priced alternative, Bibble Pro. Not only is it cheaper than Lightroom, 30% less at $199.95, but it's multi-platform, available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Mm. They offer a fully working demo to try before you buy, so what do you have to lose? It's up at BibbleLabs.com. Cool. Yeah, it looks pretty sweet. I want to try it out. I, I still am trying to actually just find all of the photos spread across multiple hard drives Aww. since the move. It's Ooh. okay. It's better than finding them far too late. That's true. And then migrating them all online. <laughs> Did you know you can now watch Revision 3 on the go on your iPhone with the new official Revision 3 iPhone application. Get all your favorite Revision 3 shows like Dignation, Texella, App Judgment, Food Mob, and more for free on your iPhone. How do you do it? Well, you go to the iTunes store or go to revision3.com slash iPhone to download it and install it. It's free, people. Check it out. For everybody watching, we live on your questions, so email us, techzilla at revision3.com. Tech help, product reviews, how-tos, you ask us, we'll do it, but we need your emails to make it happen. So don't be shy, send them into techzilla at revision3.com. Even better, send us in a video question. Think of all the fun you can have and the admiration of all your friends and family when they see your mug on our show. Just keep it to 15 seconds, upload to YouTube, and send us a link in an email with video question in the subject line. And as always, you can visit our forums at revision3.com slash forum. Share your thoughts, ideas, or comments with other fans of the show. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Till next time, you've been watching Texilla. Welcome to this week's freebie download pick. Free program. Sorry. Squeaky shoe Squeaky. person. Spyware Terminator is a pretty full featured application for Windows. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was really funny. Three, two. Check out Spyware Terminator. <laughs> I can't keep a straight face. Three, two. Do it now. That's a different that's a different Schwarzenegger reference, but do it now. Ah, do it now. But when I said I'd kill you live. Get lie. to the spy well. I lied. <laughs> Steve writes in. Yeah. What's the matter, Patrick? CIA got you pushing too many pencils? <laughs> I hope. I hope that was on video. It's the Veronica Veta. <laughs> <laughs> Read it. Do it now. What happened to tacos? Tacos is a lie, isn't it? Tacos is never actually happening. Actually, uh... Excuses. See? Every week. Just kidding. Just kidding! You're doing a nice thing by bringing tacos in. I'm not making fun of you. They offer a fully working demo to try before you buy, so what do you have to use? Why can't I read this last thing? It's the last one! Why? <laughs> <laughs>